Hey everybody, my name is Mike Montgomery, and today I'd like to show you how I built this plywood utility desk with room for rack mount audio and video equipment on modern builds. So welcome to the scrap plywood corner here at Schultz's new studio. I need to build one more production desk and this is pretty much all the plywood that we have left. So I'm gonna do my best to design and build a sturdy desk out of this material right here. Let's get it. I started by just finding a piece that would work well for the top of this desk, something that was about the right size and had some good looking grain. Then I grabbed my circular saw along with a straight edge and I cut it to its final size, making sure to keep track of all of my off cut pieces. And here you see me measuring that off cut in place to figure out how tall I want the border of that desk to be. I wanted to make sure it was tall enough that it would hide the day to day mess that a desk typically has, but not too tall so that a monitor or other piece of electronics couldn't hang over it if they needed to. And now I'm cutting the two blanks from my side pieces which are going to be tiered. I want the front of them to be really low, that way it would be comfortable if an arm or something needs to overhang, but they need to match the height of the back of the perimeter too. And I'm definitely not a pro when it comes to using the circular saw freehand, but I felt comfortable enough that I could go for it on these two cuts, and it ended up working great. I just used a pull saw to cut away the remaining material that the circular saw wasn't able to reach. And there it is. You can kind of see this thing taking shape. I'll be attaching the perimeter of this desk using hidden screws, like you've seen me use plenty of times in the past. I just set my pocket hole drill bit so that I can make a recess everywhere that I wanted to put a screw. Then, because the surface of the screw was underneath the surface of the plywood, I was able to fill in those voids with a 3 8 inch dowel. I always made sure to use masking tape anywhere I drilled because oak plywood is very splintery, and if you don't do this, it'll typically chip out. I just laid down a bead of Gorilla wood glue everywhere my plywood was meeting, and then I could screw everything together. This whole step really is simple and the only tip that I have is to make sure the grain orientation of your dowels either matches or is directly perpendicular to the grain of the wood. This just makes everything look a little more intentional and like proper joinery, even though we both know that this is a hack. And with that, the top for the desk was complete. Now before moving on, I'd like to give a big thanks to this video's sponsor, The Home Depot. Long ago, whenever I thought about The Home Depot, I thought mostly about building materials, lumber, supplies for projects, and things like that. Now, I think about smart home and tech. Home Depot is a one-stop shop for some of the coolest gear for you and your home. I'm talking about smart home security, like this Ring wireless home security package, all the way to TV and entertainment with this Roku Premier Bundle. And in this video, I'm gonna be highlighting a game changer for me. This is the Tile Mate 4 Pack. I don't know about you, but somehow I seem to misplace about everything in my life. Everything from my wallet, my phone, my glasses. These tile trackers are so convenient and easy to use, and the best part about them is you don't need to recharge them. You only need to replace the battery once every year, and you'll always be able to find the items you lose most often. And right now, while me and Ben are traveling a lot, I made sure to put tiles on all of my bags. So another huge thanks to Home Depot for sponsoring this video, and if you're interested in learning more about their range of smart home products, make sure and follow the links down in the description. Now back to the build. So the top for the desk is done, and I'm really happy with how it came out. I love that perimeter that goes around the edge. I think it's super classy. It almost reminds me of a vintage writing desk. Now the base, on the other hand, is not gonna be so awesome. Schultz's team have got these big audio video rack mount units for all of their equipment that need to stow underneath the desk. So I wanna be able to hide that as much as I can. Instead of doing slim, tapered legs, I'm actually going extra chunky for the base. That way I can hide that big black box. And just like earlier, I'm gonna be making it all out out of the scrap wood that we've got on hand. Let's get it. To make sure both of my leg pieces were uniform, I used a squeeze clamp to attach the two together and I cut both pieces at the same time. 
And I know I say it all the time, but painter's tape really is key when you're cross-cutting oak. And just like before, after my two leg pieces were cut, I used that same pocket hole drill bit to establish all of my recesses where I want to put screws later on. Then I went back to the plywood corner and I grabbed this piece that was an off cut about 8 to 10 inches wide and I used that for my two stretcher pieces connecting the leg assembly. Then I grabbed this 3 quarter inch off cut to offset the stretchers from the edge of the legs. Since this is all made out of the same material, I wanted to add a little bit of dimension and shadow lines to help make everything look a little more interesting. I know it's a small thing, but having that little bit of light show through my two stretchers helped lighten everything up quite a bit. This desk is so chunky, and I was trying everything I could along the way to fight against that. And just like on my previous desk that I built in Schultz's space, I connected the top to the base with these simple angle brackets that I'll leave linked in the description. And once everything was secured, I put on two coats of Verithane water-based polyurethane in satin finish. This really is my favorite step whenever I'm working with oak. I can't think of any other species that have so much color or contrast in the grain that shows off whenever you put finish on it. And with that, this project is done. Now I'd be lying if I said this was my favorite project or if I said it was even very high on my list, but it does serve its utility really well. The top has plenty of room for two monitors and any other tabletop equipment that they'll need to use, and the base does a good job of hiding that chunky black rack mount unit for all of their audio and video equipment. For me, the redeeming quality on this project is how all of the grain interacts with itself. I did a pretty good job of keeping track of all of my offcuts so that the grain was continuous in multiple areas. Also, I really love that border around the desk top. I think it takes a desk that would be considered ugly to passable, which is a win in my book. Thanks a ton for watching everybody. I really do appreciate it. If you're not already, make sure and hit that subscribe button and the notification bell. That way you stay updated every time I post new videos. The past two desks that I built are going in Schultz's new studio, like I've mentioned already. And me and Ben are heading back out to New York to finish those podcast spaces here in the next week or so. So make sure and stay tuned to my Instagram, at Modern Build, so you can see what we're up to. Once we get everything finished, I'm gonna create one more video that's sort of the culmination of creating the entire space. And I can't wait to share that with you guys. It really is coming along amazing. So we'll see you next time. Have a great week. And this has been Modern Builds. That was a weird outro. See you guys.